Welcome to day 10 of our 28 day video challenge. You are looking at a strand of river cane that I have in my yard. And once a year, I try to harvest the largest pieces off and strip the um, exterior leaves off of them and let them dry as straight as possible and use them. I cut them down into lengths uh, to weave up window blinds. And so you're gonna see some footage of me um, cutting that down and stripping some of the bark off. And then I'll show you some pieces when we go back inside of pieces that I harvested last year. And you can see when you first harvest them, they're rather green looking. And then after, uh, after they dry out proper, they turn a nice kind of a buttery shade of yellow. So I hope you enjoy it. So these are all the larger strands of river cane that I have cut to be harvested. I'm gonna strip down the leaves off of them, save the little tufts on the end for flower arrangements, and uh, try to weave some reed blinds, river cane blinds out of them for my front porch for this summer. But I wanted to wait till most of winter had gone to let all the leaves die back. It's easier stripping them then. We have such mild winters that it's not so difficult. Okay, so I wanted to show you what the cane looks like in different states. All right, so this bottom piece I just cut right here. And if I were to take the uh, wrapping off of it loosely. You see it looks like this one. And this is one I just stripped. You see how green it is? I usually take something like a, a knife or something just to get the little bits of it off later. This was from a year ago. And I only stripped the bigger leaves off, the big leaves that look like this. And this is February, so this one's had about a year to cure. I cut it down last season, like a year ago. Let's see if I can, there's a spot. So it turns yellow after a time. So let's see if we can find a, Now this isn't smooth here, so because I let this dry on it, I think it probably left more impressions. I may have to dig further down to get it. Well, this may not be a good example to use. I don't think it did. I think it left an impression. All the others I cleaned off. So, I guess if you want a more textured finish, don't strip them. So that means I get to strip all these. Ugh. There's a little nodule at the base of each one. Each of these can make a baby. So if you have that joint and you have a little nodule and you put that in the ground, it's gonna sprout. And that's why this is invasive. Put these in wet areas. They like to grow beside streams. And this one, is not a native variety, it's a European variety. So it's Arundo Donax is the Latin name. My mom's trying to call, I'll have to call her back. Uh, okay, so anyway, that is, that is uh, what that looks like when you forget to strip all the stuff off of it. So I'll have to show you a sample from inside. We'll cut another piece of footage to do that. All right. Well, this is the only place I have to demonstrate how I clean this up in a little more efficient way. 
um, this is a whittling knife and you can basically just roll it around there right at the base of the V and then all that will come off a lot easier and then you can clean up the little bit later that makes it a lot simpler so I can just go and just make it once around you can hear it kind of cracking like paper and then it breaks off a lot easier all this that comes right off so I can take a it's kind of waxy on the outside so I can clean this off and remove that residue I've never seen it mold up like that as bad but just very lightly but it has been such a rainy year I don't think anything has had a chance to dry out so I'm attacking this right away you know that other clip I showed you I was trying to clean it off and it was uh it was all um uh, couldn't really see the detail but it was all um it had these grooves in it from from this drying up against it so I like to strip the leaves off right away that was just one piece that I'd found that I'd missed and I'd brought it out everything else has been prepped for making blinds already and has cured and dried so but let's see I love that I wish it would stay that green but it goes to a buttery yellow afterwards so we'll this is a really awkward angle <laughs> so I'm trying to beat the cats because Rico already tried to eat some and about choked on a piece. I had to get it out of his mouth. So, if I don't get this done tonight, it goes into the parlor away from them. And I'll get it tomorrow during the day and work on it some. But we may end up doing a, setting up a little area where we can do time lapse. Maybe while they're napping and they're not underfoot i measured the granddaddy piece of all these that i cut and it is 11 and a half feet long <laughs> i have nowhere to put it i cannot set it up right now i really want to lay it flat so i have it straddling a bunch of bookcase tops right now all right mina <laughs> this is so exciting for them. Um, anyway, so that is the, the cleaning part. And we'll do more later. So thanks for watching. I meant to show you how, the, how you get the nodule off. Um, there's a nodule there. And I'm going to score around first and get the, the main paper off. And then I'm going to show you how get the nodule because it'll be a little more visible once all this leaf material is done so you can just take it and hook it under there and then just pop it sorry about that and then you have a little nugget left and what I do is after this really dries out I'll take a um, I usually take a flat razor like you know like how you can put a straight razor blade into a window scraper I can take that and go whoosh 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 with it like that, but it's the flat blade, so it's doing that. But I'll, I'll try to get a clip of that at a future date. Um, these are not dry, so they're not really ready for that. I'm just trying to get the, the worst of the leaves off, so as not to perpetuate this moldy situation. Because once you pull this out of the ground, you know it starts to go dormant and it cannot fight the, the mold as quick. So. You only cut what you can process that day. At least that's what I do if it's this rainy a season. If it had been like a drought or a drier season or I've got this in a wet spot in my yard and it's we've got twice the rainfall we did normally. So things have stayed kind of wet in some spots. So I am 
thinking about upgrading to a weeping willow tree. But I have I have 10 cypress trees on order that I'm going to plant. So I am I'm looking forward to getting those in the ground and seeing if they take because I want something to be greedy with water. And cypress can do okay in water or not, but it would be a great thing to have. And then they're slow growing, but you know, I'm in my 50s. So I might be able to make something cool in my 80s with them or not if I'm still around. So we'll see. Somebody will be able to take advantage of it. There's another big old knot and that almost needs a bigger one. And look at that little, you know how you sometimes in bamboo plants, you see that little negative space there. So that makes a really pretty little divot, adds a little bit of interest. Ah. Uh, Last year, I cut as many as I could to a 36 inch length to fit um, a segment of porch window because I've got screens um, on part of my porch. And um, I don't know, I'd like to get a fancy contractor to come in and just give me a proper windowed in porch with windows that can open the screens if I want, but I'd like to be able to get, be out there and not deal with mosquitoes. So, the screens that are on there are ancient. So, ah, sorry. Okay, we'll stop. Okay, so I think I'm done for the day. This is uh, one of, these are five of seven canes that I have cleaned up uh, just initially. I wanted just to get all the excess stuff off so I could arrest the mold. I'm going to have to wipe all of these down um, to remove the surface mildew so that they can dry properly. Uh, it's got kind of like a hard waxy exterior. So it's, it's, it's really is protected, uh, but it does need to, um, have the surface stuff removed just to be safe. And then I'll put these in as flat a, as possible location and let them dry to cure. And, um, and, oh, I need to hang on. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go and run and get last year's so you can see the yellow versus green side by side. Okay. We're back. All right. So. These here are from last year, and these are, I've cut them into one yard sections. That's got a split on it, but um, this is what it looks like with the little notches removed. These are alternating, so it's one on this side, one on that side, one on this side, one on that side, and that's how this cane is. The, um, but these are one yard pieces. I can take this and I can steam it later when I'm ready to straighten it out. But you see how nice and it's almost like a buttery yellow. And then you've got this lovely green and this green will fade to this after it cures and dries, it will fade to this. So um, I don't know a way to avoid that. And I actually prefer this. I feel like it's a little more neutral. So that uh, is everything that I'm going to show you on this session. And uh, maybe when we get enough of these dried and processed, uh, maybe later on we can do some uh, weaving. And I'll show you my partially completed experiment where I have kind of started playing around with weaving. I'll probably take it apart um, just because I, I use junk yarn. But... Um, and and do something a little nicer maybe with a little nicer twine but uh this is this is this is what i'm going after i've 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 been growing this stuff and just messing around and seeing 
it usually takes more than one year to get really mature. I like to try to grow it um, two or three years to get some thickness. And if, if you don't thin it, it will um, also uh, take longer to grow. I've been neglectful. I just kind of wanted to see what it would do. If I didn't do anything, I'll just let it kind of go wild, hack it back every once in a while all the way to the ground. How long does it take to come back? So I've just been kind of learning by doing and I pretty much have a rhythm now of of I can harvest enough that I want to mess with. I don't want to be a production facility. I uh, my time is too precious and we're only on this planet so long. So I just want to do enough to, you know, piddle around on a project and make something for myself and learn the process and and just have the material on hand if I need it for things. So all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more craft projects like this. Thanks.